a nice daytime Wednesday matchup on the way. We'll see the Boston Red Sox as they play against the New York Yankees. This game's about to get underway, so come on, let's go to Gary, John, and Steve at Yankee Stadium. American League Baseball coming up, the Yankees at home. With Crook and Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Hi, everybody, 2K Sports Major League Baseball. Yankee Stadium just teeming with rabid fans sold out again. Always the threat, Derek Jeter. He's in the lineup today for our ball game. Starting on the mound, CC Savanta. And Steve, as he faces these Boston hitters, what will be the focus? Well, we got a lefty on the mound on this one. Some of the best stuff in the league among the elite left-handers in the game. I guess the, a lineup that can certainly put runs up on the board, but you have to believe if the lefty can get the job done, he should put some zeros up. We've got a moment to check out that lineup for the Red Sox. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, even though he hit for a low average, Jared Saltalamaki is a guy that can do some damage at the plate. He was inserted in the middle of the lineup halfway through the season last year, and he didn't disappoint, putting up big numbers for a catcher. Another good year for CC Sabathia. Yankees ace 2012, 3-3-8 ERA, 8 up the innings, 200 plus again. Sixth straight time he's done that. With the Yankees in the American League East, we were talking about last year was the second straight year they won the division. Seems like every year they're in the running, if not the favorite, John. Well, and they should be. And you can say what you want about the payroll, but they just have good players who play good baseball. 14 of the last 17 seasons, they've come away with the division title. Unbelievable dominance in the tough division. The leadoff header, Jacoby Ellsbury, to get us started. But well, Jacoby Ellsbury is a guy you don't want to put on base in the top of the lineup. He can walk, he can steal bases, and he's also a power threat at the plate. And that's taken for a strike. Just a 214 career batting average against CC Sabathia. Great afternoon for being at a game. Yankee Stadium, a nice afternoon out. Sabathia with a windup. Good eye there. Jacoby Ellsbury lays off it to even the count. Well, when you throw the fastball, that's where you want it to go. Now you can elevate a pitch next time around. Well, and this is one lefty he just doesn't like to face. He's never really had a good at bat against him throughout his career. 1-1 one, one on the way. Takes a swing at that fastball. Doesn't get to it. 1-2. and two. You know, as a dismal season as it was in 2012 for the Red Sox, one positive for them was at least they were competitive on the road. They didn't finish over 500, but they did rack up more wins on the road than they did at home. It's hit foul by Ellsbury. Team support, got to have that, and they've got it here with some 48,000 plus. The one two on its way. And he fouls another one off. Well, a great piece of hitting right there to stay alive in this at bat. A tough pitch. He fouls it off. Now he's hoping that the pitcher will make a mistake so he can drive one. And thinking back to what Steve was saying about the Red Sox, not sure. If that says more about their play on the road or how bad they were at home. Well, it says a lot about a lot of things with this team. But I, I think the biggest thing with this team, there was so much drama around it starting in 2011 at the end of the season with all the talk continuing into 2012 with the new manager and everything that happened with that. I think maybe this team now with another new manager, maybe they can get back to just playing baseball, not worry about everything that goes on off the field. Full count, 3-2. The 3-2 pitch. That misses ball four. That is a guy you do not want to put on base. A good eye at the plate right there. He showed the discipline to lay off of that inside pitch. So many guys just go up to the plate and swing just to swing the bat. This is what you call a professional at bat. He was patient. He worked the count. He worked the pitcher. And he got that free pass. Shane Victorino standing in. He's 3 for 11 career off C.C. Sabathia. Here's a swing and a fly ball. 
as he just strolls over for that out. And for Victorino, he didn't hit for power or average as he had in the past. 11 homers, 255 in the season. Here's a look at how the Yankees will match up defensively. Infield, outfield factors in this one, John. And no matter where Ichiro Suzuki plays in the outfield, you have to take his arm into account. One of the best throwers in the game today. Runner on here for Dustin Pedroia. His career number 243 off CC Sabathia. Lifetime average 320 against the Yankees. The first pitch called strike. Sabathia's got him on one. You look at the big trade, Crawford, Gonzalez, Beckett. Talking about the Red Sox, they all went to the Dodgers. That's a lot of talent that left, but it did free up some money, John. Well, they got a lot to spend, <laughs> but they have to spend it wisely with the right people. I think when they went out and got Crawford and Gonzalez, I think they were just trying to get the best players available, not the best players for their team. They have to be a lot smarter with how they spend their money. Now Cervelli with the target. Here's the delivery. And Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by. Well, that's a solid pitch going up in the zone with that four-seam fastball. You establish different parts of the zone, and you change the hitter eye level. In this situation, he took the pitch. One-two pitch coming. Hit that one right back up the middle. One. And there's the second out of double play. Execution on that 6-4-3. And the Yankees. It'll be their turn coming up. I'm Gary Thorne. John Crux, Steve Phillips with me. And the Yankees getting ready to start this one off. So who are you looking at, John? Ichiro Suzuki. They, very unorthodox in the batter's box, but the bottom line is he puts the ball in play, uses his speed, and he always gets around 200 hits every single season. And we've got John Lester out on the mound. He'll get the start for Boston. So, Steve, uh, what's he going to be conscious of as he looks at this Yankees lineup? Well, for John Lester, he's got that exceptional fastball, kind of hard, boring action on it. Then he'll cut that fastball as well, run it in on the hands of the right-handed hitters. He's the complete package. He's a competitor, a bulldog on the mound, and he gets away pitching up in the zone. Here's a look at how the Red Sox will line up defensively. John, uh, who's a factor for them? Well, if you love guys who hustle, gritty, are going to give you everything you got, and if he has a chance to die for a ball, he's going to be on his belly in the dirt. That's Dustin Pedroia. Has turned himself into one of the better second basemen in the game of baseball. And it's Ichiro to lead us off. His batting average, 306 lifetime against John Lester. This one's bounced up the middle. Lester, one away. Almost got that base runner on. Take a look at the replay. Well, this guy always gets down the line in a hurry. They've got to come up firing, and they get him just in time. Good speed, better defense. And a very good combination using timing and location to keep the hitter off balance. Derek Jeter will stand in with one away. A few years ago, everybody was asking, is that it? Is Jeter done? He had a career low season in offensive numbers. I think that really egged him on, and he just came back to being the Jeter that we've seen before. He really has nothing left to prove, Steve. He just goes out there and works the way he does because that's his makeup. That one outside. With so many things that went wrong for the Yankees last season, one thing that went right was Derek Jeter. What a leader. They needed leadership. He got it done with production on the field. He still has some baseball left in him. Here's the 1-0. Jeter will take that low. You see that every aspect of the Boston Red Sox struggled last year, and their ace, John Lester, not immune to it. He posted his worst season since becoming a full-time starter. Well, the Red Sox troubles certainly uh, mimic Lester's, or perhaps vice versa. Uh, John Lester, not a good year, 9-14, and, and an amazing 4-8-2 ERA, John. Unex unexplainable. The stuff that he has, he should never lose more games than he wins. He should never have an ERA over four. I, I just, I don't know what went on with him. I don't know if it was, you know, you know, everything was going on with his team and the clubhouse. What happened in 2011 affected him. Lays off that time, but it's in there. A knee-high strike evens things at two. But I, he, if he's going to bounce back and his team's going to bounce back, he has to be a big part of that.
That's hit foul by Jeter. Another foul ball. Derek Jeter, quality at bat. The at bat gets extended. He threw a great fastball right there. Had it in a pretty good spot, but the hitter fouled it off to keep alive. And Lester misses. The 3 2 pitch. And on a full count, hit on the ground. And Drew picks it up. Two down. Well, Stephen Drew isn't that big, flashy dive all over the field. You know, make the outstanding play that gives the oohs and ahs from the crowd. But hit the ball at him. He's going to make that play more often than not. Maybe one of the best shortstops at the routine play in all baseball. And here's Robinson Cano. 228, not a good lifetime number against John Lester. Head up the middle. First hit of the ball game. Robinson Cano, the guy's hit everywhere in the lineup. Now hitting in the middle of the lineup, hitting in third, fourth, or fifth, because he's now become that huge run producer. Well, you talk about going out with a whimper in the playoffs. I mean, the Yankees seem to have all the momentum they needed after edging out the Orioles in the division series. But they just laid an egg against the Tigers in the American League Championship Series. Led to a lot of questions for this team. That will bring up Mark Teixeira. And getting swept out of the playoffs will raise some eyebrows when you talk about the Yankees. The Yankees, uh, there are going to be some repercussions. Yeah, and I think that's why you saw this offseason that they, they're trying to cut payroll. I think they're trying to get guys who, who had struggled in the postseason and try to bring in new players. I think there's a difference in the postseason. When you're not hitting home runs, how can you score runs? The Yankees had no way of scoring them if they weren't hitting it out of the park. At the belt, the 1-0. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. You know, it happened before, and it will happen again. The Yankees finished with the best home record in the entire majors, and the mystique of the stadium in the Bronx continues to live on. A very good season for them here at Yankee Stadium. And that's a ball, 3-0. and oh. You'd think the sheriff probably is going to have a green light on this. Here's the pitch. That's a foul ball. Well, anytime you have a count three and one in your favor as the hitter, you're looking for a pitch in a little box in the location you want to. If he throws it in there, you better be ready and get a good hack at it. Three and one. Here's a swing and a miss at the fastball. Three and two. And uh, the 51 wins by the Yankees at home, Steve was talking about, just edged out several other teams that won 50. Still, it didn't seem as though Yankee Stadium was as tough a place to play in as it had been. Full count pitch. Here it comes. A big swing and a miss for Mark Teixeira. Strike three, and he's out. So they can't push any across here in this half of the inning. Nothing doing for either side offensively here in New York.